All right, guys, we're here again at Generic Reptiles, and this time we're gonna go into the room with Eric here. And as you can see, it's very dangerous, so we're gonna have to knock so we can go in. Who is it? It's Captain Crunch. <laughs> What's up? What's up? All right. This is Eric from Generic Reptiles. Those of you that follow him on YouTube might already know him or on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we're trying to get you to do more YouTube videos. But editing oh, videos time. is terrible, which is why I don't do it. <laughs> so this is uh, the Venomous Room here. One of them. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> uh, so I will let Eric take it away, and we'll talk about some of the stuff here and show you some cool animals. Yep. Um, so this is one of two of our rooms. Um, most, if not everything, in this room is kind of in quarantine uh, right now. Um, at, least, uh, at least for the next 90 days to 180 days. Um, so some of the stuff in here has been imported. Some of it's come from other people's collections. Uh, the stuff in my other room is pretty much stuff I've had long term. Um, so we'll just do a tour of this room today. That way I don't have to wash up and transfer animals and so on and so forth. So right. got a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, you know, lately I've been on a spree of uh, trying to find some rare stuff, things that people don't have in their collections. Um, and so far I think I've done pretty good at it. Um, so I mean, there's a lot more on the list that I want, but uh, we can uh, we can start pulling some tubs and take a okay. look at some cool stuff. Um, got a pair of uh, a pair of wrinkles I just got in here, uh, and wrinkles are not uh, in the true cobra genius uh, genus, not genus. Um, even though uh, even though they resemble cobras and are technically cobras, they're not in the true cobra genus. Um, but I've got a male-female pair here that I just got in. Uh, let me give Dan some eye protection because these guys do like to spit all over the place. Let's see if I can. Watch I've got on my. Oh yeah. I've got on my super eye protection here. Yeah. You guys might remember this from the video when we were at Dylan's. We uh, had to do this, and of course, his spitter was super calm that day. But that was not the norm with that animal. These guys aren't super calm. They are spitty as hell. So. We clear? You're good out there? Yep. Good. Alright, so this Hi. <laughs> oh, this is the female. Very nice. So you can see her starting to huff a little bit. <laughs> She's a huffle puff. Right here, yeah. So, now where do these guys come from? They are South African. Yep, there you go. Nice little spit in there. Mm -hmm. So these guys are South African. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful example of them. Um, wait till you see the next one. This one's beautiful, but wait till you see the next one. I pull out the oranges and everything on it. So, um, as always, cobras are very sight sensitive. Um, these guys hood like cobras, they hiss like cobras, they huff like cobras. Uh, the only thing they don't have uh, at the beginning of their name is the Naja genus. So, we are going to pull a hook out here. Shut your mouth. So, so you can see someone's, so someone's not happy. Yeah. You open your mouth all you want. <laughs> Step out. Oh, that one. So we'll close, close her up. Okay. Let her go back to sleep. Watch your head. She's kind of wanna. Go back slowly. Did you get sprayed? Yeah, on my arm a little. <laughs> We're up. Right. There. Down lower by my wrist. There, perfect. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and go ahead and wipe them down. Where is it? Yep. I mean, obviously, you know, these guys were uh, these guys uh, were most likely wild caught. Um, like I said, they're beautiful examples of wrinkles. Um, but along with them comes the spitting. And yeah. believe it or not, out of the six spitters that I have in here, they're the only snakes that physically will spit. All my other spitters don't spit. So. <laughs> All right, so this one definitely spits. 
So use a little firecracker. So E. to make liars of us all, right? I don't know. Give them time. They'll, they'll get there. There he goes. So this one is going, getting ready to go into shed, mm -hmm. but he is orange as orange can be behind his hood. He's got some beautiful, beautiful coloring if you can zoom in right there up. He decided to take off and yeah. make us a liar. <laughs> uh, beautiful coloring on his back, though. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I'm, I'm really excited to see how this one grows up. Uh, just, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful snake. Yeah. Um, so I have another spitter in this rack also. Uh, this is a nigger collis. So looks like he uh, decided to take a nap real quick. Yeah. Um, hold on one second here. and uh, see if he's awake. Now that's a handy little thing right there if you guys see that so that you don't have to use your hand to move a hide. Uh, it makes it a lot safer. You can just stick the hook in there and he'll pull the hide up. Yeah, the only thing you got to be careful of is this, the, the zip tie needs to be as tight as you can make it to where the snake can't fit through the zip tie and get stuck on the inside and the outside. So it's great to be able to fit a hook through it but if you have baby snakes and things like that, uh, it's a little more difficult. And I'm going to close this door because this guy's a little flighty and he can be quick. Um, this is a black neck spitter uh, from Africa, uh, another African species. Uh, African species just move a little bit differently than Asian species do. Yeah. Um, but he's a pretty, uh, pretty docile snake uh, for a cobra. Most nigger collets are, uh, at least the ones that I've seen, are kind of... Uh, Kind of sketchy uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to their behaviors. So he's a pretty good dude. All he wants to do is hide. I'm going to put his hide back in the back on the heat uh, so he can go back. I don't really want to bug the shit out of him. Um, you know, I just I don't like stressing my snakes out, and he, he wants to go hide. So we're going to let him go hide. Um, so this this snake spends 95% of his day hide or her day. She's a her uh, hiding out. Um, you know. It, She's got an excellent feeding response every time I open this tub. I mean, her feeding response is ridiculous. And so we'll pan over to the next one real quick. Show you a little preview here while uh, he's just finishing up over there. These two here. Earlier when I was here, this guy's or girl, or whatever it was, was up on top, which is really cool, but now they've come down. So, up top, uh, take this off now. Yeah, right. Sweating. Uh, so, up top, uh, along with those wrinkles that came in, I got a, a pair of uh, Dendroaspis and uh, which are eastern green mambas. Um, they're still young, uh, fairly fresh, freshly hatched. Or freshly born, um, beautiful snakes. Uh, both of them are in shed right now, um, eating like crazy people right now. Today was cleaning day, so all of them are on fresh substrate, paper towel, obviously for quarantining purposes. Um, fresh water. Uh, we try to change out our water fairly often for uh, for our snakes to have fresh water, uh, but so far so good. Uh, these guys are fairly docile. Um, haven't had any uh, real bad experiences yet as the babies, uh, but they're both doing really well. Uh, and again, male female pair. So hopefully, I can do some future future plans with these guys when they grow a little bit more. Nice. Um, Baby mamas are always fun. <laughs> <laughs> so right below them, uh, it's a pair of uh, puff adders that I got in. Um, Kozulu Natal is the uh, 
is the locality of them. And they're unlike a lot of puff adders that I've seen out there. I mean, I've had Tanzanian puff adders uh, and other locality puff adders, but uh, these guys have a very, very, very different uh, look to them. So the one up front right now is in shed, so a little dull. Uh, colorings are a little dull on them, but the one in the back, uh, hard to see under this light because it's kind of hidden right now. But the sparkles that it's got on it, the oranges um, and, uh, and darker colors, and then the orange sparkles that are mixed in, I mean, I think are nothing short of amazing. They're a beautiful, beautiful puff adder. Um, so once I have stuff in for a little while, I take them off paper towels. I like to put them on some type of naturalistic substrate most of the time, depending on the species. Uh, you know, these guys, moderate humidity. They're not a high, high humidity animal. I mean, in, in Africa, they're found in all kinds of different environments. Uh, they're a fairly hardy species, you know, just uh, like most other African species. I keep them in the low 80s. Uh, I like to give my snakes in here a night drop. Uh, you know, this whole room and my other room are climate controlled, so I'm able to control the temperature differently during the day and the night. Uh, and then every, every individual enclosure uh, is also controlled thermostatically via heat panel or... Um, you know, or UVA light or something like that. So most of, most of the enclosures have heat panels. Um, they do a decent job at elevating the ambient temperature a little bit. I mean, for those of us that know how heat panels work. Um, and my lights just shut off, so we're gonna go ahead and turn them back on for a minute with my trusty this iPhone. Is, this is so cool, because he can just do it right from his phone. Look at that, right back on. So. It's the kind of convenience we all need right there. You know, it's, um. It helps me, everything on here is uh, on a computerized timer. I'm not very happy with those uh, those Zoomed manual analog timers. They always lose time or get off time and they're kind of crap. Uh, so I, I uh, everything in this room, my other room is controlled by, uh, I think the company's Casa, but they make, uh, they make smart power strips and smart outlets and stuff like that. Yeah. So everything on, on all these rooms is on a smart power strip. Uh, they default to on if the power, like when the power regains and goes out, whatever, um, or if they crap out and stop working, they'll stay in the on position, which is okay. Uh, all my thermostats in the room are hardwired into the wall. They're not going through any type of power strip because I want to make sure above and beyond anything uh, that most of the cages stay heated. God forbid one of the power strips craps out. Yeah, it's cold. So, exactly. I mean, so, I mean, uh, luckily, it doesn't really during the day get below 78 in here, so I don't think any of my snakes are going to crap out at 78 degrees. <laughs> over here. Yeah, they all uh, eight o'clock's bedtime for them, yeah. so uh, which is okay. Um, fairly easy to uh, fairly easy to turn it back on. Now, what do we got down here? So, um, I, mean, I know. <laughs> Save the video down at the bottom. Give me one second, just have to figure out what plug that is right there. Step out. I wonder if I still have that under the weed on it. Let's see. I have one plug in this room that's a different brand because uh, the other ones were on back order. So I have the outlet now, I just gotta switch it over. Alright. So, uh, Samarensis, uh, Samar Cobra, uh, another spitter. Uh, they're known to be quite psychotic. Um, this guy's not that bad. The problem is, I mean, I can take him out, but he'll be all over the place. He's not a he's not a defensive cobra. Yeah. He's a uh, skittish cobra. He will be flighty as hell, and they're fast as hell. Yeah. So, you know, I just it's fun to try to pull him out from underneath things. Yeah, you know, it's 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 just not something I choose to do sometimes, yeah. especially for video. I take him out when he needs to come out. Uh, her actually. So, she keeps trying to push her way out of there periodically. Luckily, she's got no nose rub. She doesn't try for that long before she gives up. Um, so, some, some of these cobras, um, I like to keep in racks. Uh, you know, they, a lot of them like really, really dark areas from what I've noticed. And I know there's keepers out there, whether it be here or overseas, that believe that everything should be naturalistic and everything else. And that's great. A lot of my enclosures in here are naturalistic, but um, I've noticed a lot of these uh, a lot of these cobra species uh, do better in the dark. You know, they they are more relaxed, they are more mellow, their feeding response is better. 
um, and they don't spend the whole day roaming around, you know, trying to figure out how to get out of what they're in. Um, you, I know he's not stressed because of temperature in there. Temperature's fine. Um, you know, we're in the low 80s in there right now with a night drop starting right now down to probably about 76. Um, but, you know, they, they are diurnal, so they're active during the day. Um, so, you know, like I said, but this one, uh, this one just got transferred into this enclosure from the rack. I wanted her out on display a little more uh, just to kind of show her off. Her colors are beautiful. Uh, all the same our Cobras uh, have that, that yellow and black pattern, which is uh, very noticeable. Uh, as I said before, they are spitters. Um, however, they're an Asian species of spitter, not an African species of spitter. So uh, I believe they're from the Philippines, um, along with some other species of Cobra. Uh, but uh, different movement patterns, uh, different type of species, different coloring, but overall beautiful. So. Let's move on. Yeah. Let me get the light on and uh. This is a species that I really like. So, these are uh. Crotalus hurtus. Um, some people up in the north refer to them as timber rattlesnakes. Uh, these guys actually came from down south. Uh, in Ohio, I'm not allowed to keep anything that's native if it came from within the state. Um, so these guys were shipped in from out of state. Um, they are uh, from the South Carolina or Georgia area, I believe. So this, uh, <clears throat> this, um, these particular sets of, uh, of, of uh, heritus are referred to as cane breaks down there. Uh, venom is a little bit different than the timbers you find up north. Actually, it's a lot different. Yeah, we just had a conversation, actually, my friend Josh and I about how different they are yet genetically they seem to come up the same but the personality the behavior the look everything's so different same, yeah i mean the looks are different personality wise um i find that most heritists are pretty uh uh pretty mellow snakes they're not uh not very defensive they're they're kind of the uh they're kind of the friendly rattlesnakes using that term loosely right. uh but the uh the cane break toxin that these guys have uh totally changes the composition of their venom uh a lot more hot than your northern species of timbers um, cane breaks are definitely a species that you don't want to take a good bite from uh, because you'll have a really, really bad day or two or three or seven or twelve. Yeah. So, Maybe forever. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I personally like, uh, so my male in here is pretty chill. chilly dude. Uh, the female on the other hand is kind of a biatch, pardon my French. So you can see just the beautiful coloring on him. Um, you know the nice gold stripe he's got down his back. Uh, his coloring fades as it goes back uh, all the way down to his tail. He's got that black looking tail. Uh, he is just a beautiful, beautiful snake, and I'm going to move around because we're just going to close this one in yep. so we don't have to, uh, oops. So, I like the phone. yeah, I mean, he's, he's all show, um, you know, he'll rattle, but ultimately he just, when I have him out, he'll explore, yeah. you know, he may sit still, but I mean, he's a, uh, He's a pretty good good age timber. Um, he's got some he's got some age on him. You can tell by his rattle. I mean, he's got quite a few rattle segments, uh, a few of which have broken off. So he's probably regrown his rattle uh, in different areas. Obviously, missing his baby button. But um, you know, I would think that this rattlesnake is probably six or seven years old minimum. Um, with uh, with cane breaks, sometimes the look in their face you can kind of see a little bit of aging. Yeah. Um, so the female that I have in there, if you look at her, her face is totally, she looks like a youngin, like a supermodel. He kind of looks like an old grumpy fucker. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. Yeah. I think us snake keepers kind of get used to to what it looks like. Yeah. I notice in a lot of colubrids too, when colubrids get like pushing 20, you'll start to see 
Their face looks a lot different. Oh yeah, but you can see he's a he's a fairly mellow dude. Um, you know, he's one of the few that I will take out. And uh, you know, I'm not I'm not the dude that like Steve Irwin's his snakes, but periodically I will take them out and work with them. Um, I'm just I'm a firm believer in making sure that you're able to handle your snakes when you need to. And if you don't practice and don't take them out, you're never going to learn. Obviously, anytime you have a venomous snake out, it's a risk. Um, so you got to mitigate those risks somehow uh, by using proper tools. Uh, but again, most of my snakes in here and in my other room I know pretty well. Uh, this guy, uh, he's pretty chill. His girlfriend's not quite as chill. She's more biatch. So, but I mean, this guy is uh, is pretty mellow, as you can tell. I mean, he's he's not threatening in the least. Um, no threatening posture, no threatening tongue flicks, um, you know, no, no coiling up, no rattling. And his rattling is just kind of like, you know, dude, what the hell, why am I out? Yeah. Um, not like, hey man, I'm going to bite your ass. Yeah. And I'm also <laughs> shoving a phone in his face, so yeah, he's I mean, handling that really well. So he's a pretty good dude. I uh, love him. One of the few North American species that I really, really like. Um, you know, obviously from a coloring perspective and everything, so. Yeah. Like I said, it's definitely my favorite. So we'll go ahead and throw him back in. Yeah. Scoot out of there. Get a picture of my ass if you want. No. So I'm, trying to, I'm trying to keep my viewers. <laughs> We're going to get him back in his little uh, cage here, and actually, let me go ahead and put him in the other side. That way we don't bother her. With him. Shift over. So most of uh, most of my big bellied rattlesnakes. I mean, most of the time I'll tail them, but for video purposes, it's just sometimes easier to uh, to double hook them uh, to go in. So just make it easy. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, one thing uh, well, I've seen a lot of people do when their snakes are coming off the hook or going in their enclosures is they tap them on the tail. And I never understood why people did that. I mean, it's one of the most sensitive parts of their body. Yeah. And it really pisses them off when you do it. And I don't want my snakes having a bad experience going back in their enclosure and getting pissed off. So, you know, I just, uh, I let them go at their own pace. I'm not in a rush to get them in. Um, yeah. I don't know, just my opinion as a keeper. Um, so, I'm gonna get this person out. Person, we get this snake out next. Okay. Um, Shift back over here. See if it'll work. So this snake is a little more defensive um, than uh, than the other one. Uh, she never struck. Uh, she never struck, uh, but she will coil, and uh, she does get a little pissy, uh, especially coming out. You'll hear her rattle, and so on and so forth. So, and now what is she? So this is a Crotalus basiliscus. This is a Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. Um, as you can see, a pretty large example of a Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. Um, I'm not pretty large. She's about four and a half feet long, um, almost five feet. So, as you can see, a uh, little bit defensive, um, you know, not uh, not thrilled to be out of her enclosure. Uh, these, are guys, these guys are characterized a lot of times by these bright greens and browns that they have. Uh, in my opinion, South American species are, are far more beautiful than our North American counterparts. Um, I just, it's just my, uh, my opinion. Some people think our North Americans are beautiful. Uh, I think they're beautiful. However, I think that... Uh, I think that the South American and Central American versions are a lot prettier in my opinion. So um, we're going to go ahead and put her up yeah. just because she doesn't like being out. So Come on, go in. No. no, it's going to be as inconvenient as I can. So she'll do this sometimes when she's out. She gets a little, uh, a little bent out of shape, which is understandable. I mean, I'm invading her territory, so. Yeah. Now, are you gonna want me to move to the other side for them? Um. So you have room. 
I'm debating if I'm going to pull them out uh, right now. I mean, you didn't even leave them in there if you want. I think it's cool to see how they're hiding. Like I so, said, I can, I can you know, get them pretty close. We will go ahead and pull the mail out. Um, you know, we're going to leave them alone. The male's too close to the female, and the problem is that the female is if I stick a hook in there for her, um, she will chomp the hook, and I don't want her to chomp the hook and miss and then chomp the male's head. She's that close to him. So, as we can see, uh, this is this is kind of what gaboons would live like in the wild. Um, these are Bittus rhinoceros. Uh, West African gaboon vipers uh, characterized by the single triangle below their eye instead of uh, Bittus gabonica, which is the eastern that has the dual teardrops below their eye. Um, you know, these guys are, some people think they're the pinnacles of some African vipers. Uh, they grow fairly large and fairly heavy. Uh, my female in here is about five feet, even though it doesn't look like it. This enclosure they're in is a six foot by three foot. So, um, the male's about four feet, female's about five feet. I think the female's pushing about 23 pounds. Uh, the male's somewhere in the 18 pound area. Um, I've had them uh, cohabiting for a while. Um, they seem to be okay so far. I do monitor them on a daily basis. Obviously, I wanted to try to get them in uh, some breeding behaviors. Uh, the male was all game for breeding when I introduced them. And I think the female just spazzed out a few times and kind of like the male just chilled out. So I'm going to try again in the future, but in the meantime, I'm going to kind of let them hang with each other in here. Uh, I do separate them at feeding time or at least make sure they're far away from each other. And this, like I said, this enclosure is pretty large, so they do have their own separate room. Uh, I do find them close to each other all the time uh, in this type of position. Uh, but as you can see in the wild, they'll do some similar behaviors like this where they bury themselves under whatever type of leaf litter, substrate, dirt, whatever else. Um, and they're ambush predators. They don't have heat pits like your, uh, like your pit vipers in America. Um, they're using sight, they're using smell, and when a prey atom comes by, it's game over. Uh, they rarely ever miss. Uh, they have some of the longest fangs of any, uh, any uh, venomous snake, uh, as most of you all probably know. Uh, in fact, I have one of her fangs and his fangs inside of my little fang collection up there. Um, <laughs> I do go digging through poop to get their fangs every once in a while. There you go. Uh, snakes do shed their fangs, for those of you guys that are watching his channel that don't know, venomous snakes. Um, so a lot of times they will uh, leave them inside of a prey item, and just like a shark, they'll have a new one that's right there ready to go, uh, and I just end up collecting the uh, some of them out of the poop to save them. Uh, you know, we can make cool arts and crafts out of them and everything else, so. My, my favorite venomous species. She's still watching. Yeah. Um, so these are uh, these are the fangs out of the uh, out of the gaboons. So as you can see, if you can focus on that. So those two big ones in there are hers, and that one right there, the one in the bottom right, are his. So hers, um, you know, take up about close to the size of a milk cap. His, not so much. And they're almost the same age snake. So you can see the difference in size between the both of them. And uh, just as a, uh, as a comparison, this, it's from an adult Western Diamondback rattlesnake. You can see the size difference in fang is just uh, astronomical. I mean, uh, you know, Crotalus atrox, a lot smaller fang than the Gaboon Viper. So I don't want to get bit by any of them, but I know. Just to give you a size comparison between the two. So 